my dear learners welcome to today's session on faculty of english at srn international school jagatpura so in my previous video on common errors i hope you understood all the concepts so before moving on to part 2 of that video i would request all of you to go through that video thoroughly so let's start today's video so the first common error is use of fewer versus less use fewer when discussing countable objects for example he ate fewer chocolates than the other guy so remember chocolates is countable or fewer employees attending the meeting use less for intangible con concepts like time for example i spent less than 1 hour finishing this report let's look at some more examples here fewer items fewer crimes fewer people fewer arguments fewer bills fewer calories remember all countable and let's look at some examples of using less less time less punishment less progress less paper less money less fat so all intangible let's move on to the next error lay versus lay now lay is a transitive verb it requires a direct subject and one or more objects someone lays something somewhere its present tense is lay i lay the pencil on the table its past tense is laid l a i d yesterday i laid the pencil on the table the other case is with lay which is l i e is an intransitive verb it needs no object its present tense is lay example the andes mountains lie between chile and argentina and its past tense is lay the man lay waiting for an ambulance so let's revise through this image lay to lay is to set something in a resting position it must have an object it is a regular verb but note the spelling of the past simple and the ed form that is l a i d laid and not l a y ending with the ed let's look at few examples i lay the book on the table shall i lay the tray on the bed a wonderful wooden floor has been laid in the dining room how dare you lay your finger on him lay the cards face up on the table so remember that lay is used to set something in a resting position let's move on to lie to lie is to recline or to rest in a flat position it does not take an object it is an irregular verb the ing form is lying and the past simple is lay let's look at few examples i would like to lie down for a while don't lie they're mopping on a lovely morning like this some people like to lie on the beaches but i prefer to go on sightseeing we lie in the sunshine for hours getting a tan so revise the concept of lay and lie let's move on to the next error continual and continuous they're similar but there's a difference continual means something that's always occurring with obvious lapses in time and continuous means something continuous without any stops or gaps in between for example the continual music next door made it the worst night of studying ever and her continuous talking prevented him from concentrating so remember continual continual means something that is always occurring and continuous means something continuous without stopping or without any gaps next error is nor versus or nor expresses a negative condition it literally means and not you are obligated to use the nor form if your sentence expresses a negative and follows it with another negative condition use nor before the second or father of two alternatives when neither introduces the first think of it as or for negative sentences and it's not optional for example neither my boss 
nor I understand the new program. My boss did not understand the program, nor did I. So I hope this is clear now, the use of nor and or. Let's move on. It's versus it's with an apostrophe. I-T-S, it's is a possessive pronoun. For example, the puppy is going to find its toy. It with an apostrophe is contraction of it is. For example, it's so hot in July. That means it is so hot in July. Now, just to easy remind, you can replace it's with it is every time and reread your sentence for meaning. So it with an apostrophe is a contraction, which means it is. Let's move on to the next error, which is disinterested and uninterested. A disinterested person is someone who is impartial. Disinterested means impartial or not taking sides. In other words, not having a personal interest at stake. Uninterested means not interested. In other words, not showing any interest. So the correct sentence would be, a good referee should be disinterested. That means the referee is not partial. He does not take sides. He was uninterested in Jill's hobby. That means he is showing no interest in the hobby of Jill. I hope the meaning of disinterested and uninterested is clear to you. Let's move on to the next error. Farther and further. The word farther implies a measurable distance. Further should be reserved for abstract lengths. You can't always measure. For example, I threw the ball 10 feet farther than Bill. So remember the distance can be measured here. So the word farther has been used. The financial crisis caused further implications. So this is something abstract. That is why the word further has been used here. So the next error is envy and jealousy. The word envy implies a longing for someone else's good fortunes and jealousy is far more nefarious. It's a fear of rivalry. So envy is when you covert your friend's good looks and jealousy is what happens when others go mad over your good looking friend. So let's look at this picture which clearly states what the difference between envy and jealousy. Envy when you want that someone else has, like I envy his good luck. So this is what you want. Next is jealousy. When you are worried, someone will take what you have. So I feel jealous when he smiles at my girlfriend. Next error is in the usage of since and because. Now children, since refers to time and because refers to the causation. For example, since I quit drinking, I have been happy and healthy. So this is referring a time when you quit, when you had quit smoking or drinking. Because I quit drinking, I no longer have any liver problems. So this is the causation here. That is why the conjunction because has been used here. Next error is in the use of whether and if. Now, many people seem to assume that uh, weather is interchangeable with if. Now, but here, weather expresses a condition where there are two or more alternatives. So, remember that weather, are, weather is used to express the condition with at least two or more alternatives. On the other hand side, if expresses a condition where there are no alternatives, no choices, no condition. For example, I don't know whether I'll go out tonight. And next, I can go out tonight if I have any money. Next usage is the use of may and might where children usually make a mistake. Now, children may implies a possibility and might implies for more uncertainty. So you may get a headache if you stay out in court. You might get a headache if you don't cover yourself. Someone who says, I may have more cookies could mean that he or she doesn't want more cookies right now or that he or she might not want any at all. So remember that may implies possibility and might implies far more uncertainty. Let's move on to the next error. Lose versus lose. Yes, now L-O-S-E, lose, a verb is to be without something, the loss of something. I do not wish to lose 
more weight. On the other hand side, L O O S E lose is an adjective free or released from attachment, not bound together, not straight. My belt is very loose around my waist. So just an easy reminder, L O S E loose has come to be without its extra O. So that means you're not losing anything. You're not bound to anything. Let's move on. Me versus I. Now rule to remember is I is subject and me is object. Use the pronoun I along with other subjective pronouns such as we, he, she, you and they when the pronoun is the subject of the verb. So Claire and I are going for a coffee. Use the pronoun me along with other objective pronouns such as us, him, her, you and them when the pronoun is the object of a verb. So the sentence would be the dog followed John and me to the door. So remember I as subject and me as object. Now effect and affect. This is one of the most common error we make. Effect is noun produced by a cause, a result. So if I say the effect of your leadership is visible here. The next word affect is again uh, is a verb that means to act on or to produce a chance. So she affected all of us with her. Effect is the thing produced by the affecting agent. So remember the usage of effect and affect. Let's move on to the next error. Whose versus who with an apostrophe. So whose is a possessive form of who. Whose plans are these? On the other hand, who along with the apostrophe is a contraction for who is. So who is going to clean all this mess? Easy reminder, you can replace who is with uh, who's with who is every time and see if it makes sense. So remember who along with apostrophe means who is. So I hope uh, this session was a wonderful session for you all. You enjoyed it. You learn a lot of new errors, which I hope you're not going to commit uh, further. So before we end up, I would request all of you to revise the part two of the video as well as part one of the video on common errors. And if you have any doubt, uh, you can come to our classes, have a word with us. Till then, stay healthy, stay fit, respect your elders, obey your teachers and never stop learning. Bye-bye. Take care.